Some have also asked why was there no consultation with the current student body and staff. NUS did not do so because the decision involved discussions between the senior leadership of two universities and with their respective boards on sensitive issues of strategy and finance. Instead, NUS, once having settled the broad parameters, wanted to give maximum time for the transition to occur and for the stakeholders to be involved in working through the transition issues. Second, students, parents and alumni have asked how the move affects the stature of the YNC degree. Today, YNC graduates graduate with a YNC degree that is awarded by NUS itself. NUS and YNC have assured all current students that they will graduate with the same degree as their predecessors. NUS and Yale are both globally renowned universities which are well recognised by employers, including the public sector and postgrad institutions. I'm confident that the YNC degree will continue to be highly valued and its, pa and its past and future graduating cohorts will remain in good standing even beyond 2025. Beyond 2025, NUS will continue to provide supporting documentation to explain the context of YNC and what a YNC degree conveys and provide letters of recommendation or referees if alumni needed them. The new college will maintain the spirit of independent inquiry and inclusivity that characterise YNC, USP and NUS. Some have asked about the impact of the merger on academic freedom in Singapore. On this topic, I would like to make two points. First, there have been similar concerns about a perceived lack of academic freedom when YNC was established. They proved unfounded. In fact, few believed then that YNC would live up to its ambition. Even fewer would own it. It is perhaps ironic and a testimony to NUS and YNC's efforts all these years that YNC is now seen as a paragon of academic freedom in Singapore. Second, YNC's current policies on academic freedom were in fact framed by taking reference from NUS's practices relating to academic freedom, and these practices have remained unchanged since. The faculties of arts and social sciences in NUS and other autonomous universities have also have a long history of teaching and research, including on potentially sensitive and difficult topics long before the establishment of YNC. They are highly ranked globally and attract distinguished scholars. It would be grossly unfair to faculty members in NUS and other autonomous universities to suggest that their teaching or research is in any way less rigorous or of lower quality or less free than that of the YNC faculty. What other options and alternatives were considered and why were they not taken? Secondly, what do you feel is the impact on the future possible tie-ups and also some of our existing tie-ups, for example, Duke and US? Uh, you know, I mean, especially there's, there's a certain impression given that uh, maybe, you know, even though we might approach other external parties for similar collaborations in the future, will we then uh, suddenly decide that actually, you know, uh, we've had enough, we've benefited enough, we're going to forge ahead. So, um, you know, I think that really ties into our academic standing and our reputation. Thank you. What other options have we considered? Uh, in fact, actually, uh, President of NUS, Professor Tan Ning Chai, have laid it out in his op-ed. There are various options to consider, but the most important thing is to remember what are the guiding considerations in de deciding on any options. There are two guiding options. One, to make sure that we develop a generation of students that are much more global in their perspective, much more able to apply interdisciplinary approach to problem solving. Second, is to make sure that the whole experience in our universities is much more inclusive, much more affordable, much more accessible to a wider number of students. And it's based on this that we decided that amongst the various options, whether to continue the current model to merge the USP with the YNC, or to even uh, develop a separate model, as uh, someone would have said, that amongst all these different models, NUS have decided that the best way to achieve both objectives that I've just illustrated is to combine the USP and the YNC program together to make it much more affordable, accessible to m many more students. On your second uh, supplementary questions about our posture towards uh, international partnerships with uh, other foreign universities, 
Indeed, as we speak today, we are in the process of building up new partnerships with, new, with other universities across the world. And why are we doing so? For two reasons. First, we must make sure that we continue to learn from the best. I'm personally not very taken by uh, ranking per se, because uh, even if a university is ranked high or low, there are elements in the universities that we can learn from. So I think we must take a very open approach to considering partnerships with others to make sure that we continue to learn from them and to take the best aspects from these partnerships. Now, on the other hand, as I've mentioned, when we go into a partnership with any foreign universities, we must also bring value to other people, and we cannot just copy on the basis that uh, they are better for us. Even if we try to learn from others, we must be prepared and be confident to chart out our own way to have our own unique value propositions. And that is how we will continue to go forward. So at this point in time, uh, I don't think this partnership coming to is a natural checkpoint will have any implications for any of the other partnerships that we are in or exploring with others. And I've mentioned, as I've mentioned in my PQ reply, Actually, for every partnership, we have milestones to check to make sure that both parties find it mutually beneficial for both of us to continue that relationship. And at times, when it comes to a natural conclusion, we must be prepared to chart our own way forward, develop our own unique value proposition so that we can even be more attractive to other partners who want to work with us. And that we must continue to work together.